This is Jack. When's the first tournament? And he's a professional actor, but he's a complete beginner at pickleball. My pickleball background is essentially zero. And he asked me if I could help him get really good, really fast, so he could get invited to Katy Perry's next pickleball tournament. Um, I really wasn't sure. So I booked us a court, brought him a pair of shoes and a paddle, and drove to Hollywood to find out. And what I found really surprised me. You're already so much better than you were like 15 minutes ago. In this video, I'm gonna show you a realistic one hour transformation from a complete and utter beginner to somebody who looks like they know what they're doing on a pickleball court. Watch the whole video and then comment at the end what rating you think Jack ended up by the end of the hour. And then predict what rating you think he'll get at the end of three months if he plays every week. By tackling this approach, I think I found the fastest way to get better at pickleball. I'll walk through the approach, explain why it's the fastest and why it's better than other approaches and how you can do it yourself. There are a lot of really great moments in this video, like this. It's basically unlearning tennis yeah. as much as possible. Yeah. This. Pushing my dog away. Like, no, don't eat oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's don't perfect. eat that. Exactly, yeah, yeah. This. Small, soft, slow, just like lovemaking. And we're just not gonna talk about this. So like, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but first, let's set the stage. So what's your what's your pickleball background? Uh, my pickleball background is essentially zero. Nice. Um, I've played maybe a dozen times altogether. I was an early adopter. I I started playing in 2019 up in Northern Michigan, and then haven't played since. So. What's your goal? Uh, Go pro. We're just gonna make a plan. We're gonna hit a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna see where you're at. Get a baseline. And then in two weeks you'll be a pro. Easy. Easy. Stop the cap. Now, the thing I really want to emphasize is that Jack has no tennis background or any other elite sports background. He's really athletic, sure, but he is a genuine beginner. So these results should be replicable by most other people. Let's get into it. So the first thing is, this is a dink, so just hit it back to me and then just try to keep it in. Yep. Get it to bounce here. In the kitchen. Yeah, right, like at my feet. Try to get it to bounce at my feet you'll notice is you can make your swing like super, super small. So you're swinging kind of like a full swing. Yeah. Like Just like make it as tiny as possible. A little tiny, tiny baby shot. Dink. Yeah, exactly. And you can swing slow too. Since we're so close to each other and you're trying to hit it soft, your swing can be really slow. Yeah, just, just slow. Yeah, that's better. Now, when you say when you say you're trying to hit it slow because it's not traveling a great distance, the ball should be slow or fast necessarily. It just doesn't need to be fast because it is so close. Got it. And more importantly, your swing can be slow because, like, when you play tennis, they teach you to accelerate through the ball, and in a lot of shots in pickleball, it's really slow. It's the same speed all the way through versus accelerating, and then you you can um, loosen your grip too. Like you can hold it really soft. As you can see, Jack was hitting his dinks with a pretty big swing. And my focus was to give him really simple concepts that he could keep in mind while he was figuring out how to hit the shot. And three S's started to emerge. Small, soft, and slow. This worked instantly. These three S's ended up being a recurring theme throughout the entire lesson. So watch out for that. Next, I wanted to see how you would do with drops. The next thing is you stay there and keep hitting to me, hitting that same shot, but from further back. So from here, this is kind of a reset. So it's still slow. Yeah, it's the same shot. I'm just needing to hit it a little further. Once I get all the way back here and I'm hitting the shot, that's a drop. But can you see how it's kind of the same shot? Yeah. I'm just really slow, soft, getting it in. Okay, your turn. And you're just trying to get it at my feet to bounce. Yeah, that's perfect. And each time, try to make it smaller. So less backswing, just meet it in front and push it. Now do it again. See if you can make your swing even smaller and your grip even softer. Yeah. Good. The, the soft grip is, feels unnatural. It feels really unnatural. You know, cause even like, I mean, I've probably put more hours in ping pong than tennis. Uh -huh. And I don't know, I feel like I'm used to just like, ding. You're like, 
People complain a lot about players that get good fast from tennis, but a lot of what you learn from tennis is actually counterproductive. You learn to accelerate through the ball on basically everything in tennis, accelerate. Right. And then when you make contact, you're gripping the paddle or the racket pretty hard. And uh, in the, for the most important shots, the dinks that we were doing and then the drops, really soft, you don't accelerate. The curve is probably just like hand-eye coordination, right? The curve is hand-eye and movement. And movement, feet, right. yeah. Here, what I want to emphasize is that what we learned in dinks translated directly into drops. Small, soft, and slow were still key here. I don't remember how to surf. Okay. Just yeah. drop and hit, right? Yeah. Perfect. Great serve. Um, here, just keep serving. Cool. Now, now try to hit it deeper. Like, try to hit it. Uh, like here. Hold on. I'll put a target down. All right. Now we're gonna do returns, and it's the same idea. You you just try to hit it deep. Okay. And then the thing when you return in pickleball is you run up to the net every time. So just practice that. When you hit the return, run does up it to the have net. to clear the kitchen? Your return. No, okay. but a, a deep return is the best return. A deep return is the best, all right. Yeah, exactly, perfect. Okay, you're good. When's the first tournament? So Jack had pretty solid serves and returns right off the bat. He was making them in consistently. So what I wanted him to focus on was hitting them deep, and that was it. All you need to do is uh, get a ton of reps on these four shots. Serve, return, drop, dink, and that'll get you to four Serve, five, return, basically. drop, dink. What's special about pickleball is you don't have to be athletic. Let's go. It's like such an athletic Let's thing. Let's go. So what I was looking for in this first section of the lesson was to just baseline Jack's skills with a focus on four shots. The serve, the return, the drop, and the dink. Why focus on those four shots? Because with those four shots, he has enough tools to start making decisions as if he were a 5-0 player. The philosophy behind this is visualizing the strategy that a 5-0 player would use. Right. And then you're just playing like that. And even though your skills aren't there yet, you're gonna, they're gonna get there the fastest by playing as if you had them. So you're not wasting your time hitting shots that you're gonna never hit again when you get better. Improving fast means practicing efficiently. That means no waste of time on court. And what are the biggest sources of waste on court? One, shots. Focusing on shots that you're not gonna need. Two, strategies. Playing strategies that aren't gonna work for you as you reach higher levels. So the fastest way to get better is to focus in on just the shots that you need to play the strategies that you're gonna be using later on in your development. And in my opinion, the right choice is to focus on those four shots. Serve, return, drop, dink. And play as if you're a 5-0 player as your strategy. Achieve those two things and you'll be beating 99% of the players at your park. So for the rest of the lesson, we focused on how he was going to achieve those abilities by showing him drills that he could do and pointing out little adjustments he could make along the way. We started by grooving dinks. And you don't want any backswing. So on your backhand, you tend to want to do a backswing because you you're do used to doing a tennis slice. Yeah, And you don't want to do that. Hit it to me, watch me. Like, you kind of are just catching it and then pushing it ever so slightly. Cool, that looks good. Now let's try cross court. You stay there. Okay, other side. Why do I not want it to go, like, waist up? Okay, come back here. Hit, hit me one that's higher. Or right, let's do a couple and then hit me one that's higher. Got it. So you're trying to avoid smashes. Or yeah, the- What are they called in? I just call them attacks. Attacks? Yeah. With dinking, you want to be consistent and unattackable. Cool. And that'll get you all the way to like 5-0. You don't need to have like really aggressive dinks until way later. If we dink like this, these are all just kind of neutral, unattackable dinks. But at higher levels, people will um, they'll hit like dink, like, Aggressive things like that, you know? Okay, so that, that's dinking. So Jack's dinks were already looking amazing compared to how he started. 
Just by focusing on small, soft, and slow, he went from looking like a complete beginner to somebody who knew what he was doing. I could tell though he was gonna need a little extra love on the backhand, but we'll get to that later in the video, so stay tuned for that. Next up was grooving drops. Just like before, the, the first thing we did is, it's called the caterpillar drill. And so you're starting here, dinking, and then you take a couple steps back, and then you do the same thing. Hit a couple from that spot, then take a couple more steps back. And then, do these get more Tennessee back here? Not really. Like, it's just still no backswing, still pushing. You just might follow through a little bit longer. See? But you know, you're never like... Got it. You'll hit a drive. You can hit a drive, but this shot's called the drop. So the drive is more Tennessee. And that's like double-handed backhand. Or forehand, yeah. Forehand, You yeah. wanna try one? You just hit it like a tennis ball, basically. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, you got it. But I purposefully don't want you to think too much about that. Yeah. Because the most essential things are the dink, the drop, the serve and return. So it's basically unlearning tennis yeah. as much as possible. Yeah. Try to do it softer and slower. Nice. See how when you slow it down, you don't struggle to get it over the net and it's yeah. just your ball is yeah, it just kind of floats over it arcs better yeah 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 your backhand is going to be much harder for you yeah but come come up to the kitchen the key here was just for jack to get a ton of reps and to show jack how he could do that after drops we revisited the backhand dink the way to do that the way to develop that is to start with dinks so i'll just hit only backhand dinks to you and then you just want to focus on no backswing and just pushing it with your arm like i'm pushing a small child away yeah i, I was trying to think of like when you would ever do this maybe like slapping somebody pushing my dog away like no don't eat oh, that yeah yeah exactly That's don't perfect. eat that exactly yeah yeah bad dog yeah that's so much better bad dog Try hitting, try standing square up like this, and then try contacting it in between your legs, or the furthest left is your left foot. Okay. Don't hit it to your side. Okay. That looks way better already. So we discovered two things that really made a difference. First was the metaphor of pushing his dog away to get rid of his backswing and make his swing smaller. And then the second thing was focusing on contacting the ball in front of him rather to his side. Okay, so we did it. We did dinks, drops, small, soft, slow. Three S's, I just invented that. I'm gonna use that. It's good. And then small, serve soft, and return, slow. you're already you're already cranking. They're all, they're deep and consistent already. Small, soft, slow, just like love making. Emphasis on small. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> small, soft, slow. Beautiful. And limp. <laughs> yeah, and the limb. It's the wrist, right? <laughs> well, actually, you're, yeah, uh, your your wrist is actually should stay firm. Wrist is firm, grip is loose. Yeah, firm only in the sense that you're not swinging with your wrist like this. Right, right, right. You're just pushing forward. Yeah. But that that actually made a huge difference. You were hitting it to your side, and you were you had no control. But once you put it in front of you. It's just looking nice. So, I mean, as far as like, then it's just a positioning thing with my feet, right? Exactly. Like getting behind the ball. Exactly. Like baseball. And that's the same, whether it's a, a dink or a drop, you're, you're like, you wanna get behind the ball so you can contact it in that same predictable spot each time. Dude, I actually think you're gonna get really good at this. Let's go. Moving the way you're doing is great right now. Okay, sweet. Um, this made such a huge difference. Check out the before and after. It's night and day. Next up was volleys. I don't think it's the highest priority shot to drill, but you do have to be able to hit them. Not for hands battles, but to be able to block back your opponent's draw. Okay, what we're doing is volleys now. So just hit them, like aim at my chest, and don't hit too hard. We're just trying to be consistent right now. But it's still bouncing. 
Not bouncing. Not bouncing. Out of the air, just like, like patty caking. Yeah. On this one, your grip is uh, more firm. Okay. And you're just kind of punching it. You're kind of punching. Yeah. Oh. Like punch, punch. What I would suggest is you start, learn from the very beginning to pinch your elbows into your torso. Uh-huh. Instead of being all over the place like this and swinging. Yeah. Very small, you're like a T-Rex. Okay. And then your ideal stroke is just punching from here. It's like boxing. Yeah, it's like boxing. Oh man, you got so many good analogies. So let's stink and I'll pop one up and then you just smash it on me, okay? okay. If, it, if it gets to your like, if it gets high, hit it out of the air. So punch it like we were just and doing? And punch it, yeah. So like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And if it's really uncomfortable down there, you can dink it. Like, it's called a reset volley, but it's kind of like a little dink. So is that, that's kind of what points turn into, right? Yeah, so, okay, so that's a good question. What, what does like a typical point look like? It looks like a serve. Yeah. Deeper is better. Yeah. A return. Run deeper, in. Deeper is better. Yeah, then the returning team's running in. Don't then the serving team has to hit a third shot and they can either drive it or they can drop it. Right. But their goal is to make their way up to the kitchen as well. But for you, you're going to focus on dropping. Right. And you'll hit a drop. It'll be good or bad. If it's good, you come in. If it's bad, you stay back and hit another one over and over again until you make it in. Got it. And then once you're here, you're dinking, soft, small, And by slow. good on the drop, you mean just landing like shallow in the kitchen? Yeah, the thing I look for is, is my opponent hitting up on the ball or are they hitting down on the ball? Because if they hit down on the ball, it's going to be hard for you to get in. But if they hit up on the ball, it'll be slower, it'll be lofty, and then you can come in. And then once you're here and dinking, dink, 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 you're going to be a machine, so you're going to hit consistent and unattackable. Right. And that'll either earn you their error right. or they're going to hit something high and then, and then you can pop. hit them in the but face. Yeah, so basically wait for them to make a mistake. Yeah, exactly. Now we were halfway through the lesson and the plan for Jack was becoming very clear. He would need to put a laser focus in on drops and dinks with a focus on consistent and unattackable and looking for a technical feel of soft, small, and slow. So now it was time to tell him the plan and I was a little nervous he was gonna find it boring. Is this boring to you or is it? No, it's cool. Is it cool? It's helpful. Your, your plan is kind of boring. Like your path to getting good is so straight that it's well, like- Well, yeah, but I mean, I, I wanna operate. actually get good. So, you do? Okay. Yeah. All right, well then let's get some wraps. But he was bought in. So it was time to move on to what he would spend most of his time on court doing. Kitchen and transition drills. So let's do dinks first. We'll do straight on. And then um, what we'll actually do is play a game to seven. You're already so much better than you were like 15 minutes ago. All right, one zero. Go, go, go. Nice. You're in the kitchen. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah, so that was good. Two zero. All right, three zero, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go lefty now. Tough. Um, no, but I'm actually stuck at lefty. Oh no! Let's go on the board! Okay, one three. So next thing maybe to try out is see how early you can prepare your paddle uh -huh. to catch the ball to hit the dink. I know where your ball's going. I'm already positioning my paddle to catch it. And since there's no backswing, that's your swing. You're like catching it and then pushing it forward. So that's called pausing or freezing. And it's something that pros do naturally and like amateurs don't really figure out until they get really good. But it helps you so much because it forces you to anticipate where the ball is going. And then it keeps your 
your swing small too. Right. There's another benefit to doing this where if you freeze it, then you can disguise what you're gonna do with it a lot more versus taking a whole swing. Um, okay, let's do cross chords. Okay, good job. Let's go to the other one. Ooh, I think this good. might be the thing, one of the harder things for you, is this backhand. Jack Stinks had totally transformed. He made all of the adjustments and was hitting consistent and unattackable dinks. It was super impressive how he picked it up so quickly. What, what do you feel like is coming most naturally and most difficult? I think I have a good conceptual understanding of the dinking. Uh huh. That makes a lot of sense to me. I think I'm more gray on the mechanics of the drop. Okay, let's focus on that. So what, what were you saying you were less sure of on drops? So the drop, it's the same like mechanics as the dink. Yeah. It's just a further distance. Yeah. And so you, I think the main thing you might change on technique, like mainly the thing though is to visualize, like, yeah. like see the arc of the ball and over time your body just learns how to hit it. You might just follow through a little bit more. Okay. So the still no backswing, but you might like guide it like a, they, a lot of people teach it like a cornhole toss. So just imagine you're like- I was thinking beer pong. Yeah, like that. Well, I, I throw beer pong like this. No, I know, but there's no like, you're like following yeah. through. Okay, sure. It's like inverted beer pong. I'm trying to translate, well, cornhole works for the frat boys too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Incrementally adding a little more length to it. Okay, two steps back. Perfect. Two steps back. Perfect. Perfect. Ah, nice shot. Okay, now go back. I think the visualizing really helps. Yes. I think the visualizing really helps. Yeah, it's visualizing is like the most powerful thing that nobody understands. And somehow, and I don't even, I don't know why it works so well, but it does. It's crazy. Bad. So that, that's a trap you don't want to fall into. Make sure, you, make sure like on a positioning perspective, you want to be too far back rather than too far forward. Cause you can always step in and hit it. Yeah. But scrambling back to hit it's really awkward. Yeah, I was off balance, right? Yeah, so start start behind the baseline. You're accelerating. I'm accelerating. Yeah, slow down your stroke. And then try to try to try to contact that in between your feet and not to your side. Right. And and push it forward. You're sw you're swinging a little bit. So okay. come back all the way up to the to the dink, and do the nice tiny dinks, small dink. Con contact it. Um, you're you're kind of running around it and hitting it to your side still. Uh huh. Tr try to get comfortable making contact like kind of in a straight line from your right foot. Okay. So not to your side, but here, inside. You're starting to whip, do you feel that? Starting to whip? Yeah, you're like kind of accelerating through it again. Yeah. See, see if you can quiet everything down and just slowly guide yeah. it forward. I think in my head I'm like, oh, if I hit harder, it's gonna go down faster. Oh yeah, don't think that. Okay. Cause the way you make it drop is you hit it soft so that it hits the peak of its arc like around here. So it starts falling. Cause the objective is to get it in the kitchen. The objective is to get it in, number one. And the second objective is to make it so I can't attack it, so that I'm hitting up on the ball. So whether or not it bounces here, it doesn't really matter. Because if I'm hitting it here, out of the air, it's still a good drop. That felt better. It looked way better. On drops, Jack was struggling a little more than on dinks, and he regressed back to more of a tennis stroke. He was hitting it to his side and accelerating. So we went back to the caterpillar drill and then found the feeling of soft, small, and slow again. And he started getting it down. Once that happened, he was ready for transition drills. So the game you play here is you're back there and I'm up here. 
And it's a, ga it's a game where you try to get to seven, I try to get to 11, and you just play out the point. But you start back there, you try to hit drops and make your way to the kitchen. And then once we're about to the kitchen, it's basically that dink kitchen game we were playing before. Okay. Nice. Got you back. <laughs> Jack's game was looking really solid. He was hitting good drops, getting to the kitchen, and then hitting great dinks. If he did this every week consistently, he'd reach four or five in no time and probably 5-0. Okay, good. The thing I forgot to mention is you have to be able to play the opposite too. In this one, I'm the one back dropping and coming in, and you're trying to keep me back. You want to do what you can. Like, if you think about my motivation, you try to do the opposite. So what I'm trying to do is get to the kitchen yeah. by hitting drops that you can't attack. So you want to attack things, my bad drops, and prevent me from getting to the kitchen. That was great, I scored a point, let's go. <laughs> Count it. Yeah. I think you should start going, like peak, peak speed would be to find a drilling partner around your level that you can do like the things that we did for a few hours a week. You're gonna get good really fast though. I feel like what I'm jealous about is you're, you're like skipping a lot of the bad habits. Because <laughs> I don't have any habits. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Like, it took me a lot of time to unlearn a lot of tennis biases. Yeah. And then there was also like things that I did that led to me winning against beginners that were just, it would never work against better players. And I had to unlearn that too. That happens a lot in martial arts. Hmm. My coach, it's like 90% of the work is unlearning bad boxing habits. Oh, interesting. In order to, they seem related. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot of like overlap where it's like, oh, footwork, general like hand-eye coordination is similar, but the way you strike, the way you hold your gloves, like it's all so different that, you know, that's why the best boxer can't fight like a mid-tier Muay Thai fight. Yeah. You know, or vice versa. Yeah, I guess I, I would imagine like when you're a beginner against other beginners, the boxing yes, training, you're like, I'm exactly. so good. Right. But then once you play people who actually know how to do Muay Thai, you're screwed. Even a little bit, yeah, totally. Yeah. So Jack hit on something that was really important. A lot of pickleball players will come into the game and have no respect for the fundamentals. They'll win against weaker players just out of sheer athleticism. And because they're winning games, they won't realize that they're developing bad habits that will stop them from improving. And because Jack is coming into pickleball without very many bad habits, he'll be focusing on developing the abilities he needs to play like a 5-0, even before he gets there, which will make his path to becoming a 5-0 super direct and super fast. And one thing that every 5-0 player knows how to do is hit consistent, unattackable drops. I made a video that assembled 20, yes, 20 tips from top pros like Ben Johns and Tyson McGuffin that players at any level can incorporate into their games. Watch that here.